welcome back. I got a story to tell. So I'm Dr. Torres, I'm attending of 12 years, not including my PGY four years. So I guess if I did include it, I'd be a PGY 16. So you learn from experience and from listening to other people. There was an entity that's been described to me, and it's all been anecdotal because no one wants to write about it or no one wants to be chastised or laughed at. That when people's blood pressures are very, very low, when you can almost not feel it, there's a pseudo entity of death versus near death. And for some reason, the jaw and the brain work as one, either for you or against you. It'll help the intubator that if the patient's pseudo coma because of low perfusion to the brain from arrhythmia, shockable or non-shockable rhythm or from lack of blood pressure going to the brain some brains give the message to the body to relax and if it wasn't for a palpable pulse or a monitor showing a rhythm you'd be declared dead all right now there are other people that for some reason and it's hard to get numbers on this because no one wants to talk about or document this that some patients instead of relaxing especially their jaw they get almost as if they get tetany lockjaw, right? You're like, what the heck is going on? Now, if the patient's comatose, you don't need to give medicines to make them more comatose, right? There are some people who still give RSI drugs like Atomity and Sucks for a person who's comatose. Now, it's interesting from hearing this story from an attending of 20 years. So he must be PGY. 23 or 24, compared to my 12, 16, that he learned from an attending when he was training. So he was a resident. And he learned from an attending at that time who was already a 20 year vet. Experience tells you a lot. So it's amazing. I'm sharing a story from an attending of 20 years, I'm only attending of 12 years, who learned and got taught a lesson at that time by an attending of 20 years taught this attending when he was a resident. So the patient is, looks sick, blood pressure is low, forgot what the procedure was. Somehow maybe the patient had an A-line, the VP was like 60 over palp, patient's already lethargic, they go to intubate. And guess what? It's almost as if he had trismus and you're like, hmm, does he have TMJ disease? Does he have small mouth, big tongue, you know, microglossia, micronathia? All of a sudden, you figure, try to figure this out when this patient just codes on you. You can't get the blade in. And you're like, but he has a pulse, I think. You try to feel for one and maybe convince yourself once or every few seconds there's a pulse that's palpable. You're like, Jesus. And you're like, but he's has a, he's has vitals. But the vitals look very crappy. 50 over 40, 50 over 30, 60 over... Very crappy. So I'm like, hmm. And he's trying to go in. Trying to go in. And can't get anything. The mouth can't open. It's like as if he's... He needs to be paralyzed. And you're like, hold up. It's going to be sacrilegious, but I... This goes against what I've been teaching. This guy has a pulse. He shouldn't need paralysis, right? Or does he need paralysis? Then you have to decide, does he have a pulse at all, despite that rhythm on the cardiac monitor? If he doesn't, he's actually dead. He has pulses electrical activities. So then you're like, hold up. If his heart's not mounting a blood pressure that I can detect with the carotids or the radios or the femorals, and I don't have an A-line, but if I did, it's picking up something. Do I need to paralyze this patient? He's dead. But I have a feeling that the brain sometimes acts funny and gives a bad message to lock up the jaws. Tighter than the pimples. So then the issue is, you give the paralysis medicines. You give sucks, you give vac, you give rock, whatever. How the hell is that going to reach the heart? He has no pulse. 
you have to be like, is he dead or not dead? Right? So if you get this rare experience of needing paralysis, and the patient has no pulse, theoretically, the only way to get that blood into his heart and into the brain to tell the brain to stop it, to tell the, tell the muscles in his jaw to stop it, is doing CPR. So guess what that attending had gave the advice? When he heard about this case and you know, the resident was, was trying to get the tube in, I won't say the name of the resident, but he's a good friend of mine. And once he gives you permission, I'll give you the name of the resident, the former resident who's now an attending. That attending thought about the case for a split second, and his answer was this. You want the paralysis to work? Instead of telling him, convince yourself the patient's dead or alive, he just did this. Tell me what happens now. 30 seconds in, those medicines that were possibly just laying in the arm, after the, even with an IV push of a flush, I think they finally reached the, the jaw, because you know why? The jaw opened up like an anaconda. Now that resident can get the tube in. So instead of answering and verbalizing and philosophizing and explaining what was wrong, that all that attending did is feel the pulse and proceed. Didn't yell. That attending said, only answer, it's happened to me before, and that's the reason I knew what to do. So you have to make a decision. When the patient is pericardial arrest, peri-arrest, and for some reason the jaws lock up, one of the few times you would give the paralysis, you gotta actually do CPR to get pumped. Some of that blood that going from the periphery to the heart, into the brain, and to those muscles that need paralysis. I would probably call it cardi cardiac arrest trismus. Probably someone has a sexier name for it, pericardiac arrest trismus, or pericardiac arrest lockjaw, not induced by tetanus, non tetany lockjaw, or cardiac trismus. Just like how you say cardiac seizures by a cardiac etiology, you had a seizure. I probably would call it the cardiac arrest trismus syndrome or episode or arrest or event. It's going to be rare in your career, but it may happen. Those are one of the few times you give paralysis to someone. All right? Or, God forbid, the patient's been dead for a while and they just in rigor mortis. Please, hopefully he's not stiff as a board and been dead for three days before you try to do all this. All right? And then that paralysis, medications with CPR, does not work. Understand. Please come back for another episode of School of Airway. Bye-bye.